welcome to the Census Academy Open Mapping Series. You have chosen the Geographic Information Systems Learning Path. In the following three modules, you will learn what makes the GIS, how to download and install your own desktop GIS, and how to design your own maps in QGIS using data from the U.S. Census Bureau and other sources. This is GIS Module 1, Introduction to GIS. In this module, you will learn about the uses and components of a geographic information system, or GIS. You will be shown how to download and install your own free and open source desktop GIS, called QGIS. The module will also take you through data and GIS, and introduce data sets from the U.S. Census Bureau. Links to additional QGIS help and technical support will also be provided. Part 1. What is a GIS? GIS software enables us to visualize spatial data, analyze those data, and answer location-based questions. With the GIS application, you can identify distributions, relationships, and trends within data, combine and overlay data to solve problems, map and model scenarios, and make predictions based on spatial data trends. For example, GIS is used to find directions and navigate from your smartphone, or even analyze crop yields for more effective agricultural production. GIS can be applied to nearly every industry or topic, from disaster risk management to business. GIS constantly informs everyday life. Organizations use GIS data to learn the what, when, where, and whys of your purchasing behavior so they can better target customers and market accordingly. In urban planning, there are numerous benefits to using GIS. GIS takes into consideration many different factors in building a city and multi-layered mapping within a GIS allows a municipal planning committee to see layers with different types of information all at once. For example, if you're looking to build a future residential development, you can compare that to the location of a floodplain, access to schools, and access to emergency facilities such as police, fire, and hospitals. As you can see through all of its applications, GIS is quite a powerful tool. A GIS is not run by computers, but rather by people requires a large amount of analysis, modeling, and other skills. Using a GIS is not only important for developing in urban areas. It is almost necessary in today's fast-moving and highly technological landscape. This series will help you get you on your way to using this technology. In a GIS, a map is made up of layers. As shown in the image on the slide, each layer represents a real-world feature. This is anything you can see in the landscape or on the ground. In this image, one layer represents land use, another elevation. The next has information about buildings, and after that there's a layer with the road network. If you put all of these layers together, you'll get an overview of the area. These layers are either going to be in a vector or a raster format. Vector format layers are composed of paths and mathematically built to show an image. All vector map features fall into one of three geometric types, points, lines, and polygons. Points, also called nodes, represent features with an XY coordinate, that is, a latitude and longitude, such as trees, fence posts, and addresses. Lines, also called ways, are made up of linearly connected points and represent features such as roads, rivers, and electrical lines. Polygons, also called areas, represent land uses, building footprints, and other enclosed areas such as lakes and soccer fields. We will mainly be using vector layers in these modules. Vector layers are supported by attribute tables. Think of them like geospatial spreadsheets. The example on the screen shows a vector layer of the United States. Each state represents a feature within the vector layer and is represented as a row within the attribute table. Additional data, such as population, can be added for each state in the columns. These attributes will allow you to create thematic maps. For example, you might design a map showing population density across the United States. You will learn more about attribute tables in Module 2. The second data type is a raster format, which are image files made up of pixels. Think of them as photographs. Raster layers are often used as base maps, such as satellite images, scan maps, or even land use land cover data. Raster provides the best format to represent data that changes continuously across the landscape, such as rainfall or elevation. A GIS relies on data and gives you the ability to query, analyze and visualize those data to answer questions and test theories. Spatial data enhances the value of information. Imagine trying to stack two Excel spreadsheets in order to see a pattern. Kind of difficult, right? But in a GIS, this is possible. And as they say, a picture or map 
is worth a thousand words. In this series, we will be using geographic data from the U.S. Census Bureau. The Census has been collecting population data since the 1790s, and these data play an integral role in the life of an American. At the national level, census information is used to plan the provision of health care, education, employment, transport, and more. The census is also an important economic tool. This series will introduce you to the Tiger and American Community Survey census data sets. Now it is time to download your own desktop GIS software. The program we will use in this series is called QGIS, a free and open source software and an official project of the Open Source Geospatial Foundation. As a volunteer-driven project, QGIS welcomes contributions in the form of code, bug fixes, bug reports, documentation, advocacy, and supporting other users on the mailing list and GISStackExchange.com. You can find more information and documentation at QGIS.org. This GIS path will introduce you to the key functions of QGIS, and in just a few short lessons, you will be making your own printed maps. The first step is to open a browser on your desktop and navigate to QGIS.org. You will be presented with the home page of the QGIS project. Scroll down and click the Download Now button in the bottom left corner. This will open the download option. In this series, we will be using the stable long-term release version 2.18. You will be prompted to save the file. Save the program to your desktop. While you are awaiting the download, take some time to explore the QGS website and learn more about the project. If your computer uses the Mac OS X, scroll down to Mac and expand the section. This version will require a separate download of dependency frameworks that will all be found in the same download link. Click the King Chaos QGIS download page link. A new window will open, presenting download options. Scroll down to the Long Term Support section and click on the QGIS 2.18.15 link to begin the download. You will be prompted to save the file. Save the file to your desktop. Please note that there will be four additional installation files that are all necessary to run the program. Go back to QGIS.org during the download to explore more about the project. Once you have downloaded the file, click the file to open and run the installation. Additional technical support can be found at these links. Once the installation is complete, congratulations, you are ready to move on to GIS Module 2, QGIS Basics 1.